Welcome everyone to the very, very first Bat Club Live, where I'm going live with bat enthusiasts, bat scientists and conservationists from around the world every Tuesday at 6pm UK time. And today we're joined by the wonderful Emily, Emily Stanton, who I'll let introduce us. Great, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Emily Sanford and I'm a big long-term bat 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 lover. And I am working with Bat b and which is a US-based company that sells high-quality bat houses. You can see one over here kind of side this in the corner. But, uh, and these bat houses were designed with the help of bat expert Dr. Merlin Tuttle. So it's been really great like getting to work alongside him. And we're really excited to be joined with you today, Emma. And thanks for all you do to help raise awareness of the importance of bats. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you so much for coming. I'm so, so excited because um, as people know who've read the book, uh, Mara and the Bats, it's all about bat conservation, bat activism. And in the book, she raises money with her friends and her community to make back to put up bat houses. So it's super exciting to chat to like the experts in the field. Um, so we've got lots of questions from people, which is awesome. But I'm going to start by uh, asking you how you first into bat and a little bit more about your amazing documentary <laughs> absolutely um, so i actually literally tripped into my passion for bats by tripping over a bat hole in peru and <laughs> i've never seen batman but people say it's a similar story but basically i was walking along and um i tripped over this hole and i looked inside and something flew across and i was like what was that was that a big moth or something and so i stuck a stick in to see how deep the hole went and then all of these bats poured out and I was terrified. I didn't know anything about bats, and I've only seen like Halloween and rabies. So, you know, I had a fairly negative impression of them. So I ran away screaming. And I told my friends, I, <laughs> I found a bat hole on the ground. And they were like, oh, you have to show us. And I was like, oh, no, no, no. Like, Come on, you have to. So I kept bringing people over to stick those stick in, poor bats, stripping them. But <laughs> they come out every time. Um, so after seeing them a few times, I lost my fear of them, and I realized they're actually quite cute and I started googling facts about them I was blown away by finding out that bats are crucial for our economy and for um, and for our ecosystems by pollinating plants and consuming pest insects and there's so many adorable bats out there you have to google the Honduran white bat or the fire bat um, <laughs> or the Yoda bat um, just that their diversity really amazes me so I've been a, a bat kid ever since that's such a great story, I love that. It's <laughs> <laughs> over a bad ball. <laughs> I'm so amazing. Hard and clumsy. I was like, life <laughs> I love that. Um, that's amazing. So, yeah, I was doing a bit of research before, and of course, you made the wonderful, wonderful documentary, The Truth About Bats, which I didn't realize was new for ages because I saw it and thought it was amazing. And I was like, oh, you're that, Emily. <laughs> really important. But yeah. Um, Yes, so it's an amazing documentary called The Truth About Bats, and um, you spent a year researching it, is that right? That's true. I got really lucky and I got a grant to go travel the world for a year, studying how different cultures perceive bats. So I got to interview people and ask them, because my perceptions of bats have been so different, hearing about rabies and vampires and Halloween. Um, so I wanted to learn about how different cultures perceive them and how that affects bat conservation. So this documentary is kind of a summary of every not everyone, but summary of a lot of people I talked to and kind of the stories they told. That's amazing. Yeah, everyone give it a watch. I'll put the link um, below in a bit. Um, awesome. So, uh, do you have a favorite part of your job working with Fat um, b I absolutely love working with Fat b because I get to talk about bats all day and um, every bat house that we sell goes to help more bats have a home. Um, bats are in serious decline, especially in North America where white nose syndrome um, hit and basically destroyed a lot of their populations. So by putting up a bat house, you have, you're giving them a safe place to live, so that feels really good being able to be a part of that. That's awesome. Yeah, for people that don't know, um, white nose syndrome hasn't come to the UK yet, but it's devastating bat population um, in the US, so there's lots of information about that one. UCI of Bat Conservation International and stuff like that. And then, but yeah, it's great that you're giving them a home and they're like, they've been um, 
I don't know what the right word is, accredited. Like it's a renowned bat expert, Merlin Tuttle, which is really exciting. Have you met Merlin? I have actually, yes. <laughs> um, did you meet him online or, or in person? Um, in person before COVID. Um, so I went oh. over to his house and interviewed him for the documentary I was making. He was a kind of key feature in the documentary. And, um, and I've been lucky to be able to work with him on, um, you know, asking if the bath houses need improvement and asking for advice about uh, recommendations for where to place bath houses and those kind of things. He's been uh, kind of guiding the business. That's awesome. Yeah, I loved his um, audio in the documentary. I just wasn't sure if you'd done it virtually, but that's awesome that you have got to meet him. <laughs> um, so, do you have um, a career highlight that you'd like to talk about or anything that. Ooh, well, I think one of my favorite jobs is when I was. Uh, my job is to collect bath poop to <laughs> study it for the bath parasites for a research project I was doing. Um, so it was amazing getting to stand at the entrance of this cave. It's called Cueva de los Cuperones. It's meant the, the um, cave of the Boas. And basically at this cave, um, snakes would be hanging down by their tails like vines. And they'd be hanging there to catch the bats out of the air as they flew out. So as you're, you're you know, waiting for the bats and the little snake like lowers itself right next to you. <laughs> uh, but it was quite fun. Like just getting to see the bats up close and like, realizing how you know how kind of precious they are and they all have different personalities if you've ever gotten a chance to see about close you know they have just as much personality as a dog or a cat does um, which is very cool <laughs> that's so cute i can't believe the snakes are just hanging like that it's like something out of indiana jones <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was um awesome so we got sent some questions from little library owls uh kids who are here watching i believe um so they would have to ask does emily do you have a favorite bat species i have at least three favorite bat species You're the, hunter, the hunter and white bat is really adorable it looks like a little white cotton ball with a yellow nose and yellow ears so definitely worth a google after this <laughs> and, um the yoda bat is pretty cool the painted bat, also known as the fire bat, has bright orange wings that they use for camouflaging in dried banana leaves. Um, and of course the flying foxes in Australia are really adorable as well, so, and very cool. <laughs> very good choices. Yeah, the Hanundra ones are so cute. <laughs> they're a lot, they always go viral and someone posts the pictures, they're like, oh my god, they live in leaves. Emma, so cool. <laughs> <laughs> what's your favourite bat? Um, I've got a real soft spot for the Noctil because it's the first bat I saw up close in the hand and Steve's here, he knows when I saw them. <laughs> um, I just think they're really cute with their leathery little faces. But yeah, I, I, there's so many cute ones. Um, the Hori bat's really cute, the Powder Donut one. Um, I love, obviously love the Blank Boxes as well, but yeah, I've got a real soft spot for our UK bats. It's <laughs> it, it nice to know they're like near by. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. So, whereabouts are you calling us from? You're in the UK, aren't you? Um, yeah, I'm, so the Bat BB is a US based company. They'll build and manufacture there and uh, mostly only self sold in the US and Canada. But I've actually just got married um, to a man from Britain, so now I'm living here with them. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, so, to ask a question about America, who's, that's also from Little Library Ask Kids, they asked, how many bat species are there in America? Well, God, I think there's 53, roughly. Around that, isn't it? Yeah, I'll have to double check, but yeah, something like that. Uh, and the UK has 13, is that right? Or? I think 17 breeding species, okay. and there was making lonely, lonely boy bat, but they haven't found them this year, so I think we might have found them, but 17 oh. ones that live permanently um Fantastic. and they're yeah they're, they're all micro bats in america aren't they they're not mega bats yeah they are micro bats yeah so mega bats are flying foxes aka mega bats um they live in tropical regions only so like australia thailand um, like that. um so another question how many bats typically roost in a standard bat box so how many would roost in that one behind you yeah, great question. Uh, so this one is a dual chamber house and it can hold up to 125 bats. And then also the single chamber house, which I'll grab, very small. 
this is a single chamber house and this can hold up to 50 bats. Wow. So are they suitable for UK bats as well or just the bigger UK yes. bats? Pretty, most micro bats will, will use it. The most common bat house use species are the little brown bats and the big brown bats. Oh cool. So they're, they're the most common species in America, aren't they? Yes, they are. Yeah. Well, yeah, they're, they're they're sorry. <laughs> sorry. Like our equivalent of our most common is pipsterels here. Yeah, that's <laughs> Awesome. Um, just check the chat. Harry and Jack would like to know how many bat boxes we should put up in our garden and how we can encourage them to move in. Any tips for that, Emma? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so, bat expert Dr. Merlin Tuttle. Um, often recommends putting up at least two bat houses and the reason for that is if there are two bat houses in slightly different areas one more sunny one more shaded that provides the best options for moving if on a particularly hot day they can go to the more shaded one or if there are parasites or predators around that also gives them more flexibility so it's particularly important for um, mother or like maternity colors maternity colonies uh, because they'll often look for that extra security when looking for a place to live. But they know if they have two safe places then it's, it's in some cases it can be 50% more likely to get occupied. Wow that's awesome okay yeah um, and something I found really interesting when researching the book was the different the completely different rules for where to hang a bat house in the US as opposed to the UK so in the US they're like they're like not on trees because I think you have bigger predators like big bats and just like bats for dinner. Um, but here we do say that the one trees because our bat house is generally like quite small. Bat box bat house is the same thing. I'm going okay. People are confused. Yes. Um, yeah, I, I it, it changed uh, between because of the uh, um, two different editions of the book. Uh, in the US one they're called bat houses and over here they're called bat houses. So yeah. Um, Someone else has asked what flowers should we plant in our garden to attract night insects for bats. So um, there's quite a lot of answers to this, so I'm going to paste in the chat a link and that also has the link to Emily's documentary as well. So feel free to put that in another tab if you're on so you can watch it later. And then um, cool. Does anyone else have any questions? Let me see. Is there anything you'd like to discuss, Emily, like um, anything you'd like to talk about with current research or anything you're particularly interested in? Um, oh, one thing I, I forgot to add about the last question of how many bat boxes to put up. Um, it does really depend on you and how many, uh, what level of pest control you're seeking. So more bats always does lead to better pest control. Um, but I guess one topic I'm particularly passionate about is um, how much people's perceptions of bats, as we talked about earlier, impacts bat conservation. And I've, I asked Dr. Merlin Pittle, like, how much of a threat does that compare to for bat conservation compared to white nose syndrome or wind turbines or deforestation? And his answer was quite surprising, actually. He said, one of the most important threat is people's perceptions of bats. And he said the reason for this is if we don't think they're worth being protected, then why should we mind if a wind turbine is being put up in a migratory bat root? Or why should we mind if a, a cave that's a crucial roost is going to be destroyed if we think they're just disease carrying uh, rats, basically? So, um, so if you can do something to help, one thing that you can do to help us is just sharing photos or facts about them, teach people about their importance, as Emma's doing so fantastically with her new book, because um, these little steps go a long, long way for changing the entire public's perceptions about them and will ultimately lead to their conservation. Yeah, I think that's so, so important, and I remember him saying that in a talk I went to, that that's the biggest threat is human um, misguided fear, and I think that literally underpins everything, like you said, because if if people care about bats and they realise how important they are, that will underpin policy, that will underpin like more people, you know, donating to bat charities and getting interested in bats. So yeah, that's super super important. And I think stop trees like yours and um, you know, things like my book and 
and other ways people can get involved and interested in that's all helped conservation so much um, so yeah that, I think that's really important so I've got a question from Jack age five it's he said how can we hear bats would you like to answer that sure that's a great question so one of the best ways you can hear bats is if you get a device called an acoustic detector and they sell them they're kind of quite small a bit expensive but you put them onto your phone and there's an app that lets you hear the bat's voice and it creates sound waves and it'll tell you what species is flying above your head awesome yes i don't have the fancy one in the phone but that one is really cool i have the heterodyne detector which has a dial and a little screen with a number on it um, and that's another way you can do it but yeah, there's lots of different bat detectors available and it basically um, translates the bat sounds that we can't hear unless you're very young so young kids can actually hear bats very faintly um, and it translates it into a sound our human ears can comprehend and then we can hear them which is pretty cool and uh, so Jolly Grey Giant says, what is the smallest species of bat in the UK and the US? Do you know what the smallest one in the US is? I don't. Oh, I, I would guess the little brown bat, but yeah. I do know what the smallest bat species in the world is. Yes, like, why don't you tell us about the cute little bumblebee bat? <laughs> yeah, so there's a bumblebee bat in Thailand that is, the adults are almost no bigger than a human thumb. And so you can imagine how big their mammal, their babies are, um, and they're they're one of the smallest mammals in the world, which is pretty pretty amazing. Um, mm -hmm. What's the smallest bat species in the UK? I believe it's the pippin mill. Steve will correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure. I don't know which of the three pipistrels it is. I'm sorry, I should know that, but. Um, yeah, I know that they're the small, like one of the smallest for sure. Um, so, question from Molly. What are baby bats called? They're called pups, which I think is so cute. Um, <laughs> baby pup, it's baby pup season at the moment, bat pup season. That's why people are very, very busy in the bat community. They're rescuing baby bats, pups, and making sure that they're okay. Um, just, uh, uh, they say once, once the babies have grown up, do they stay in the same group as their parents? they take off I don't know how long they stay with their with their mums do you know it takes about a month it varies for every species but it takes about a month before they're flying independently and they do usually stick within the colony however many species will break during the summer months into maternity colonies and bachelor colonies so once they reach breeding age they'll kind of split the summer months and then come all back together to hibernate so um but some bat species don't, don't hibernate they migrate so it does vary awesome yeah that's so cute the little bat babies um harry says how do they catch their food so that varies from species to species as well so with insectivorous bats who Eat insects, they catch them with their mouth or with their feet it, or with their tail, it depends on the species. Um, and obviously, fruit bats use their eyes instead of echolocation most of the time, and they seek out the fruit with their sense of smell and their eyes instead. Um, little Library asks Random bat fact in New Zealand, where we're from, only native mammal is a bat. Oh my god, that's so interesting! I didn't think about that. Mm -hmm. So cool. Welcome for answering. And New Zealand bats um, can even walk on the ground. At least one of the species can, which is a pretty fascinating. <laughs> yeah, I think the bats walk on the ground. It does look really strange, but really cute at the same time. They're sort of like, like they're doing an art making it work. Uh, yeah. Um, all right. So I think that's all the questions for everyone. Um, I'd love to know, Emily, before we go, if you could tell everyone on Earth one thing about bats, who would you tell them? A single bat can eat up to a thousand mosquito-sized insects in a night, um, and it's just pretty amazing how much they help us. So if, if you can go and kind of tell people, they mention um, some negative things about bats, just tell them, hey, didn't you know that they can eat up to a thousand mosquito-sized insects in a night? And that can go a long way to help you change people's perceptions of bats. Amazing, that's a yeah. great one. And how about you, Emma? Oh, yeah, I would probably, it would probably be like a super interesting fact. Um, 
about how much they help humans. I know that might sound very like human centric, but I think it's really important for people to know like how important they are to food chains and how important they are for sea dispersal and forest regrowth and things like that. So it would be something about um, which foods we wouldn't have without that, e.g. chocolate and tequila and mangoes and bananas and things like that. <laughs> I had no idea that they pollinated those before my research subject fully, so that's really mind-blowing for me. Um, well, thanks so much everyone for coming, it's been really, really cool. And Emily, before we go, where can they find out more about you and where can they find out more about that Yes, so you can go on Bathy website, there's lots of information about bat houses, painting guides, painting tips, um, pretty much everything you want to know. And if you want to get your own bat house for your, your place, you can also do that there. Um, and there's more information um, there as well. And if you ever want to get in touch with me, you can uh, message back me on Instagram. Awesome. Thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure. And thank you everyone for coming to the very first Bat Chat Live. Um, Bat Club Live, I mean. <laughs> Bat Chat's a podcast with PT. You should just watch that. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for coming everyone and thanks for coming Emily, it's been a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much for hosting it, this has been a pleasure. <laughs> Bye! Check out our other videos for more Bat House tips and information. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.